Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today I'm joined with Nadine from Hey Nadine, and uh, we're going to run through your camera bag on all the gear that you use to make your videos. But do you want to just explain a little bit about what your videos are and what you make? Mm -hmm. So I am a travel vlogger. I go around the world and I film my various experiences and I also do tips and advice. But we're awesome. going to run through the bag that I take with me and all the gear I take with me. Yes. Yeah, this is kind of like a, a first in a new series that I'd like to do. Uh, it's kind of like, I mean, we're all at times a bit, you know, addicted to gear, um, but I think it's just kind of interesting to have a nosy around in someone else's camera bag, see how they organize it for one, but also see what they're using, um, and just like kind of get in and, and see what's going on there. So first of all, what is this bag? I've been recommended it many times, but I've never actually seen one in the flesh. Yes, so this is the Wander bag. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. It's a wonderful bag, you've had a lot of different bags. Um, some of the features that I'm going to run you through are, one, it's waterproof, important. It's kind of like a module bag. So you right. Can kind of so it's not just camera bag, you could take no, it No, you could take it as a, a normal bag, but realistically, it's meant to be a camera bag. Yeah. Um, it's a side opening one, so Good. you can access it through the That's side. Always a feature really I'm always looking for. And you can access it from the back. So it has a big zipper that opens like this. And that's kind of where your main camera uh, is. Then we've got second zippers. Yeah, there's a lot of zippers. I'm not gonna run through every feature on the bag because it's a lot. <laughs> but these were kind of like a big two selling points that we really, really liked on this bag is that you can Ooh. access all of your gear. And then you can access your main compartment and that's kind of where we put all cool. the Cool, and this stuff. is separated in yeah, dividers. Yeah, it is separate in dividers. And can that be adjusted so that you can use like full bag setup if you wanted? Yes, um, yeah, because this is actually, so your whole padded camera section is removable. So it's kind of zippered in a bit, but it's a big, it's like a big cube. Oh, so awesome. So you can remove that. And then you could replace it with clothes or something if you didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, if you didn't want it. It's got a whole bunch of other little pockets. <laughs> um, and then it has this roll up top. So this is kind of the extender. This is where we end up putting like a lot of our like jackets or just bigger items you want to carry that's not necessarily a camera here. Oh, nice. So you got like a whole extra pouch pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of stuff, surprisingly. So we've been very, very happy with this bag. So the thing with camera bags is like, I find personally, I've gone through so many different camera bags and you just always have almost the perfect bag and then there's one thing that's like really niggling about it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything with this one that's just really grated on you? Um, yeah, these straps are magnetic, but when they're not magnetic, it kind of like falls on your back like this. Oh, uh, I see. And so it like rubs. Yeah. So sometimes when you like put it on quickly, you're like, oh, there's an awkward strap on my back. That is the most annoying thing that I've found about this bag. There's not many annoying things. Yeah. Very pleased with this camera bag. I give it an A+. Plus. Yeah, well, that's great. I mean, I'm glad to be kind of going through detail on that because loads of you guys have commented thing to check out this bag. So I'm glad I finally see one in the flesh. Yeah. But let's go straight in and see what gear you're using. All right. The fun part. Actually, they come in, but... There's also a little bit of a test to see how fast you can get it out. Oh, man. <laughs> Should we start with the main stuff and then get on to the... Yeah, so straight away I can see Sony, Sony, Sony. Yes, so I am Sony. Um, so this is my main camera. We call it the big cam. <laughs> Uh, this is the main camera that I shoot most of my tele videos with. It is the Sony A7S Mark II. Really love this camera. There are a couple reasons why I bought this camera. 120 frames per second. Yep. Love super slow mo and low light settings. Pretty widely known for the low light. Yeah, I mean to me that was the biggest changer. thing because like I vlog in all different types of settings and a lot of low light yep. indoor nighttime. Um, we have these little like makeshift wind socks. Yep. Although we don't typically use the in-house audio. We always use okay. my microphone. So it's my Rode mic. That is where we'll do all this of our- This is the Video Mic Pro. Yeah, Video Mic Pro. I've had yeah. this thing for ages. Yeah. <laughs> it's been through the rear a couple times. Um, it has been in for repair, but it is a solid mic. Windsock, Rode mic, and then these little sockies. If we do have to record audio like on the fly, we have the little wind socks there. Perfect. And what lens we got on here? This is a 24 to 70. Yeah. So this is my main lens. Um, 24 to 70. Yeah. We film, I would say, 80 percent 
of the travel content is filmed on yeah, this it's, lens. It's pretty versatile. It is a very range. versatile yeah. focal range. And then when you have the 120, like you get that little bit extra because it is a crop factor. Yeah. Um, but it does. And you vlog with this, so do you hold it? Not typically. No. Ah, okay. So that's where ah. we have the second camera. Um, but do you, want, do you want to run through this? Yeah, so what's this guy? So this is the other guy that we use. Before we get to my second camera. Big cam. Oh, actually, yeah, we should, we should mention um, also on this. This is the Peak Design. Peak Design. These are amazing straps because they just clip out like this and the other one clips in and then you... Yeah, so you can put it on a gimbal or something. Mm -hmm. Which, no rattling. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really nice. So we don't have the Sony. We have the Peak Design straps. I'm very happy with those straps. <laughs> it's not a one-handed job. <laughs> no, it's not a one-handed job. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the first time I've ever actually done that mechanism on the uh, on the peak design. I've oh, yeah? seen other people having them because they're pretty popular, yeah. but I've just never personally used them. And I always thought, like, how strong is that? But just doing that then, that felt pretty sturdy. Uh, the other lens that we carry with us, I would say the other 15% is filmed on this one. Mm -hmm. And this is the Batiste oh, that lens, 18mm. Wow. Yeah. It's a nice and wide. It is a nice wide lens. And the 2.8. 2.8. Yeah, it's a 2.8. This is a beautiful lens. It looks I'm heavy. very. It is. Is that? Not too oh, bad. so that's lighter than it looks. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, we mainly use this for interior shots. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I want to get like an interior, uh, I have a vlog on it. If I ever vlog on the big cam right. it's just wider you want that kind of wide angle you don't want it too close but this isn't stabilized am i right thinking uh it's not overly stabilized so just using the stabilization yeah the because yeah the sta sensor stabilization cool. uh the, and we use this when we use the crane so this is one of the gears that i don't have with me mm -hmm. because um when me and matt travel together matt's my boyfriend and um, my secondary camera person. <laughs> <laughs> multiple uh, job titles. Multiple job titles. Um, we will bring more gear with us. So one of the things that are missing is the crane. So we have the Zion crane, which is our stabilization. Yep, got one of those. Love, Love it. it. Love, <laughs> Love it. Love <laughs> it. Uh, this is beautiful on the crane because it just gives you those sweeping um, pans, which are really, really nice. Yeah. And how do you find the autofocus in this when you're vlogging? So obviously you don't have a screen if you are vlogging no. with this. So does it work out yeah. good for you? Yeah, pretty decent. I don't typically vlog on this though. Okay. I vlog on the small oh, cam. This little guy. This is small cam. This is big cam. <laughs> uh, this is the Sony uh, RX100 Mark V. Flips out. Yeah. And it's really nice and small. And so this is where I would do my vlogging because I can hold it up like this and talk and it's really portable. Or if I want to do sneaky, sneaky filming. Mm -hmm. Not illegal filming, sneaky filming, where you just don't want to have a big camera and be conspicuous. And you got two little wind muffins yep. on here Again, as well. Again, it's the same, I just found these on, I think it was eBay. You can find them on Amazon too. They're just like little wind socks that I've just cut and put there because it makes a big difference. The audio isn't great on this. Um, obviously any kind of external mic would be better. But yeah, there's no mic input on these, is there? No, there no. isn't. But the picture quality is really good. I am looking to upgrade this camera eventually and get a slightly better vlogging camera, but this is kind of like tops for, for this range and this price point with no like detachable lens. The Sony RX100 Mark V and then the Canon G7X Mark II. Those are very comparable. Yeah, the big difference between those though is this one does 4K mm -hmm. and you can shoot in log mode as well. Yes, even though Not I don't... that you'd maybe <laughs> want to do that on a small sensor. It's a bit tricky with yeah. the logo. We've tried the log on this and it's... We're not the... I'm, I'm, I really enjoy color grading, but I once spent seven hours color grading a video <laughs> before because we decided <laughs> to film it in log. Yeah, but you can at least do like pretty decent custom yeah. picture profiles yeah, and yeah. match it with this one. Yes. We have matched it. It's not a hundred percent the same. Like I do notice the slight differences in the whites, mm -hmm. but it's pretty close. Yeah. Does it overheat at all? That's one thing I've heard with those. This one? Not no. really. Okay. I mean, it's never going to be recording long enough to ever overheat. Yeah. It, we may, I do like most of the time lapses and stuff that I do is on this camera and this camera does overheat. And the battery life is not great on this. Yeah, That's interesting. Why. How many batteries do you carry Four. with this? Four, okay. Yeah. Because on a typical day, we'll easily go through two batteries mm -hmm. of filming. On a cold day, like in the wintertime, four. 
No problem. Yeah. Should right, what else have you got in here? I can see a couple of GoPros. Yes. We got GoPros because no action or any travel blogger needs GoPros there. I still think they're the best action camera in the game. Yeah, definitely. So we have a six and we have a five. Um, the six, it to me, the six is worth it uh, for the Im image stabilization. Yeah. The image stabilization on the six is amazing. It's really, really I've worth seen it. comparison videos and it's yeah. like, it's really, really noticeable. Some accessories? Yeah. I think this is something that I've been looking to get and I haven't You actually. don't have one of these. I've got like a, a really cheap one. Is this a Pelican? I actually don't know if it's Pelican brand because Pelican is brand, mm. um, but it is like a Pelican style SD card case, waterproof, drop proof. One card that we use for a small camp, usually these ones, the Life Stars. Or we have two big camp cards. If we fill up two cards in a day, that's that's like the probably the most we'll yeah. film in a day. We won't fill up two cards in a day. It's a lot of filming, um, and we dump footage before then. So, so do you offload daily as well? Yeah, offload yeah. daily and wipe daily. Okay, yeah. So we don't keep anything on the cards, it's just too much. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always an interesting aspect, especially when traveling like as frequently as you do, that yeah. sometimes like certain best practices just don't fit into a travel scenario. Like, so a lot of people would love to not wipe their cards whilst they're traveling, but mm -hmm. the trouble is like, you can go from trip to trip to trip and you okay. never actually make it back home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can be gone for a month and you can't not wipe your cards. Um, one of the things that we probably should be doing but we don't do is we don't have a secondary back hard drive. Oh, danger, danger. I'm going to have to sell you on that. You need to get that. <laughs> I know, it's you so need bad. To get that. I've been like vlogging for since 2010 travel vlogging and I've never had a hard drive failure. So, oh my God, I'm here That makes me wince. Well, I mean, you've come this far, so it's all <laughs> <Okay>. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cleaning bag, just. Is this a pouch that comes with the bag? No, it's a separate, separate pouch. Okay. Um, just like little, they're port play. Port it looks play. like a good, mm, nice. By the way, I should mention we filmed a video on the D channel about like uh, traveling to Japan, and uh, one of the things you mentioned was like quirks of Japan. Yeah. And I never actually, it didn't come to my mind until just now. They were really pouches. Oh. Pouches everywhere. The amount of pouches I buy in Japan. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things. Two different pens, these are great. A couple um, microfiber cloths and a uh, lens cleaner. Um, this is our filter, just a UV. So right now I have just a general UV yep. on there. And then neutral density filter. Is that a variable one or just a static? Static. Yeah, yeah. okay. Static, neutral density. Pretty much a, a must have for video. Yeah, um, circular polarizer. Those are both for that one. Great. Don't use the circular polarizer as much as we should though. Yeah, I find I get into a, a situation where I'm I'm moving too fast through a scene and then afterwards I'm like, you know, it would have been great to have like had more time at the water to use a polarizer. Yeah. But Yeah, a lot of like travel's really like run and gun. Yeah. Where you're just like, you like you've gotta just have your stuff quick, easily accessible. You don't have a lot of little time to like plan. Yeah, and if you're on a like a I guess like a press trip or like a, yeah. a media trip with other people who have oh. other agendas. It's oh, so hard. You, your so time hard. is just like none. Yeah. And you do your photos with this. Yeah. Yeah. That is the photo camera as well. It's there are better photo cameras, mm -hmm. but it does still do. It still does good photos. It's just I feel like there are better photo cameras than the yeah. Sony A7S Mark II. Little um. Rocket lower. Rocket lower. Kind of wish we got a smaller one. <laughs> It's a literal rocket, it flies. <laughs> it just flew right out of my hands, guys. Just, that's everything that's in this pouch at the moment. Of course, cool. so, I mean, it's a fairly modest collection, to be honest. Like we it's, keep it pared down. Yeah, you've, yeah. Uh, you've obviously got experience in knowing what you need and when you need it. Yeah, um, because it's just, you're carrying that all day. You want to keep your weight to the minimum. Mm. Fun stuff. Grill pod. Yep. So this is the small cam grill pod because it can't hold the weight of the big cam. So it yep. can't hold the weight of the Sony A7S. And do you use that with vlogging? Yeah. With the actual I will grill use pod. this for vlogging 90% of the time. Okay. It's not as wide as I would like because I when I vlog it it's like here. Mm -hmm. I like it just to be like here. I like to see a bit of background so you're not it's not like I'm you can vlog, if you just see your face, you can be anywhere. Yeah. You like to see that you're actually in a location. Especially if it's travel related, it's yeah. like showing the location. Yeah, you like want to see the destination. 
connection with your location. So I just put, so it goes like that, and that's essentially my blog setup. So what's in this plush little bag here? So then now we're gonna get to some GoPro stuff. So action cameras, very, very important when you're traveling because you do a lot of different activities. Extendable, waterproof. Use these. Yeah, so that's actually really nice. Just because it, it compresses down. Like I used to have like a Go pole, which mm -hmm. is like a longer one, but it's very awkward to bring, whereas this is smaller. Um, this is the dome. Attaches onto the bottom of that too. So you can take off this little extending bit and you can attach the dome onto that. I see. Yeah. So then you just have pretty standard solid grip. Yeah. Um, this is just GoPro accessories. So this is like the GoPro accessory head mount. I would say the majority of the time, this head mount is like your must go pro accessory. Mm -hmm. I use it so much. Handlebar mount, I would say, is number two. So, where's the handlebar mount? I have the old school handlebar mount. I'm pretty sure they make a better handlebar mount because I've yeah. had this for years. Do you use it actually on bikes or do you put it around like poles and stuff? And... Both. Okay. Poles, um, paddles, bikes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, paddles. Then the rest is just well, little GoPro nits and abs. Yeah, another pouch. Kind of too many pouches. <laughs> Can never have too many pouches. Normally there's actually a cord pouch too. This is the... I see. I mean, this is normally a lot more organized. <laughs> I just threw this in the bag because I don't know if you guys care about cords. Do you care about cords? I mean, I care about cords. I, I don't care to see it so messy though. Yeah, I can make it organized. I can make it a little <laughs> bit better. Matt is crazy with the cord organization. He just like rolls them up and ties them in little bows. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> Honestly, we would be like yeah. you guys would the get best it. of friends. <laughs> yeah, because he's he's very particular. So I have like little um little Velcro things. They just like all yeah. ties them together. These little green bags. I didn't put them in here. They're actually in the room, but these little green bags. He puts all the cords neatly tied. <laughs> I don't. This cord is management. Something. It's a it's a thing. I'm sure there are blogs on like how to organize your cords and like you know like how you have those desk tidy blogs. Yes. Okay, I'm feeling. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're right. It's just like, all right. So. Let me get. I, by the way, are you the type of person who your your desktop on your Mac is like filled with files and stuff? Because I feel like cord management and, and <laughs> files on the desktop just go hand in hand. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Mm, yeah. But it's not the worst. It's, I, I usually keep it kind of clean because I do a lot of presentations where like. You start with your desktop and screen, I was like, oh, I've got to keep it clean. So, so then I just have like a folder called like, I call it screenshots, but really it's just everything that was on the desktop. Oh, so I see. So this is what's kind of interesting about doing this is you get to see how other people work. Yeah. And you kind of realize that as much as, you know, there are some people who would like to have as much gear as they have, or some people have like very little, in essence, you still end up at the same place. It's just how you're comfortable doing that. Yeah. For me, I like my headspace and knowing where things are and everything. Um, but for other people, that is like a hindrance, that slows them down. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I've made a nice little coil. Ah, uh, very nice. So, I mean, it's essentially cords. USBs galore. USBs galore for the various cameras. GoPros take a separate, like, USB. Oh, they've gone to USB C, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they have. Six, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so USB C. Which is a good thing. Camera ones. companies, you need to update all to USB C. Yeah, this is the okay. multi USB. Most amazing thing with Sony cameras. Sorry, Canon people. I can charge all of my cameras on USB, and that is huge, 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 huge because plugs are not always available mm -hmm. when you're traveling and they're kind of hard to come by. Like sometimes you'll see in places that have one plug. Yeah. And if you have four cameras, multiple batteries, it, honestly, it was one of my selling points. Like why I bought the Sony's and I stuck to the Sony's is because you can charge it via USB, which means you battery can charge power. it via battery power, which is amazing yeah. if you are off grid or if you're traveling about, like say if you're on an overnight bus or mm -hmm. something, you can charge up all of your gear. And this, so this is the battery pack we use. And then there's a huge caveat though, if you're shooting Sony, your battery runs out fast. Yes, your battery so does run out fast. So you're charging more frequently. Yes, you're charging more frequently. Pros and cons. This thing is a base. So this is a anchor power pack. You can charge two at a time. And it is 20,000 yeah, milliamp hours. That's pretty big. It's huge. So this, I've gone like hiking, camping for a week. And is I that pretty heavy? It is heavy. Mm. 
it's, it's a weight. It is a weight thing, but it's worth it. I've never actually counted out the exact charges, yeah. but like I said, I've, I've gone for a week in the wilderness, and just I this. just that, and I've not right. even gone through like. Half How long does this take to charge though? A solid day, a solid wow. day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I but need to get a big one. The like this. So the reason I picked this one, the twenty milliampere, is because airline limits. regulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Airline course. regulations. If you go bigger a, than that, certain airlines won't let you. There's um, a twenty-two thousand, I think. Yeah. Twenty-four, I think I saw recently. Yeah. So it varies on the airline, but that one's twenty. You're good with. For sure there was a time airline. when you could travel with as many batteries as you wanted. Someone ruined it. So, yeah. <laughs> little charging. This was like a and third is that a USB party. one as well? Yep. So this plugs in USB, so you can do two batteries at a time, which is really nice. For your Sony's? Yeah, for the Sony's. Perfect. Um, but the big cam Sony, not the small cam, so not the RX100. That mm-hmm. one, I just plug USB. Your bag's going to leave tidier than when it came. <laughs> I mean, it'll stay tidy for maybe, maybe a few hours. Later today, it's just going to get all nestled up again. <laughs> So most of this gear, I'm not going to change for a while. The only thing is the Sony, the small cam. So, mm-hmm. Sony X. so that's what you're looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. You got your eye on anything? Future stuff that doesn't exist. Right. So you've got a checklist of things. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waiting for one of two cameras. A new Sony camera with a flip screen that doesn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. Sony. Um, or the Mark, the Canon M5 or 6 Mark II. Yeah. Hoping that it so Hoping that has they 4K have upgraded a little bit of yeah. stuff on that. So that's all in this. Like I said, we usually do carry the crane when there's two of us. Yeah. But I am bad. I cannot do the crane by myself. It would just be B-roll and mm-hmm. setting up. It's too much. Do you carry it loose or do you have it in the, the hard case as well? Uh, we transport in the hard case, but then it will, yeah. yeah. So it'll just fit right beside there. Yeah. It's really nice. All right, drone, last essential of a video uh, travel videographer. Yeah. Let me just do that because that's my address and phone number. So, drone, you've seen this guy before. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to go in detail? It's, uh, it's I mean, the original. We, we should probably all know about the DJI Mavic Pro yeah. now. Um, it's a beast of a drone, considering how small it is. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see where they're going to push it in the future. Yeah, it's good. This is the Have first you ever crashed one. it? No, never been crashed. I crashed mine the first time the other day. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was just flying it and then just brain fart straight into a wall. Yeah. Don't know what I did. No. <laughs> Do you just... have any any filters for those? Yep. Or? So okay, drone, battery, sorry, three three batteries. I'm trying to hide my address. Yeah. No Because that's the legal thing you're supposed to do. Your address on your drone, so if you crash in a place you're not supposed to fly in, they can track you down. Very I, I don't fly in illegal places, no. I'm a very responsible drone person. I mean, it, there's always temptation, but for me, I always think like I just can't fly here because I'm like cities, for example. I'd yeah. love to fly over Tokyo. Oh gosh, yeah, but there's just so many people and buildings down below that, regardless of whether it's legal or not, like morally, it's just not safe. Yeah, so. and also you kind of ruin it for everybody else. Yeah, true. I mean, Come on, <laughs> Don't be the person that ruins it for everybody else. Yeah, like the people who took the wrong batteries on a plane that exploded, ruined it for everyone. Ruined it for everybody. Maybe we can blame Samsung for that. I think you probably could blame Samsung. <laughs> you probably blame Samsung for that one. Filters, ND filters. Is that a makeup case? Oh. That, honestly, that looked like a little compact. <laughs> it's like your filters. So there's three different ones. I believe they go up to 16. No, 22. Oh, cool. 32. 32, wow. 16. And these are. Four and eight. Yes. Yeah. So that, again, check. these are kind of like a, a must-have for your yeah. drone, pretty much, because bright daylight and all sorts. Yeah, I find the the darkest ones, the thirty-two, quite dark. Mm-hmm. Like we used it on like a bright, bright day, and it, the one thing I find it also gives a slightly purple tint. Uh, okay. So obviously, this is a huge amount of gear that has been yeah. built up over a a large amount of time. If you were to recommend to someone starting out with travel vlogs, what would be like a couple of go-to pieces of equipment to use? Um, so I know a lot of people are probably going to question that in the car. Yes. Yeah. Go-to piece of equipment if you're starting on a budget is getting yourself a good, obviously good initial first camera. I mean, a good thing with the RX100 is if you did want it cheaper, just go for the Mark IV or the Mark III yeah. or Mark II. Just don't go for Mark III. Oh, don't really? go lower than Mark III. Is that a no yeah, go? Yeah, no, no, no go. No go. Don't do it. Don't do it. They've upgraded <laughs> quite a bit from even from 
like from three to four, it's quite a big jump. Okay. The four to five is a big jump too. Right. Like you yeah. don't need the big camera. It's better to get a camera that you feel comfortable with. Like this is my biggest thing. Travel vlogging, you're gonna be in a whole bunch of scenarios around different people, places you don't know, and if, you, if you're not used to vlogging in public, it can be really, really uncomfortable. Um, it's a lot different than photography. I feel like photography is a lot more accepted. Mm -hmm. Like I, I film in a lot of different places. And as soon as you put, as soon as you put this guy on a camera, it's like a hawk for eyes. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts looking at you, security guards, um, people that work there, it just draws in the attention. You're going to love it in Japan then, because no one bats an eyelid. Really? It's That's like cool. the most comfortable place to That's vlog. Cool. Everyone's so used to seeing cameras and you can just walk around and they don't even get in the way or... That sounds like yeah. a really nice place. Uh, By the yeah. way, we're trying to sell Nadine on it, on the idea of going to Japan, but she's already sold. So I've now already, we're just like pushing, <laughs> pushing you to book it. I've been sold for a while for Japan. I, just, I literally have to just put it in my schedule. <laughs> just a good quality small camera and you'll find you're filming a lot more scenarios mm -hmm. and situations a lot easier and that's the best thing. You find it's it like, easier to find your voice as well. Yeah, like what yeah, you're yeah. To and, to, and, and to create more of a story because mm -hmm. you, you can get really crazy into gear. So that's pretty much all your gear. Uh, we've had a pretty good rifle through. Uh, I'm definitely interested in seeing this bag mm -hmm. in, uh, in more detail so uh, maybe I'm gonna go and test it a little bit later. You are more than welcome to yeah. test it out. You can, you can just carry all my gear for me <laughs> while you're at it. So let's end this video and uh, also want to mention that we did do a video on your channel mm -hmm. going through some tips on visiting Japan. Yeah. Um, some sort of like outline ideas because there's so much to know so we don't want to intimidate you. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> there's just like so much to know. <laughs> a lot of information but at the same time it's just, I mean you guys will know how much I love Japan so uh, go and check out that video and see some of your future videos and if you're watching this in the future hopefully by then you've been to Japan I mean, hope so. It's on my list guys. <laughs> yes, hopefully I've been to Japan. So go subscribe to the channel and um, Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already we do lots of videos on travel photography and kind of going about and shooting shots wherever we're exploring so that's everything Thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.